Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives 24 channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Clyde is apprehended. Maggie was shown around the newly renovated Horton residence by Julie. Maggie inquired whether Julie had been successful in opening the time capsule, but Julie had not yet located the key. Maggie was advised not to marry Constantine by Julie. In order to permit Constantine to remain in the nation, Maggie reaffirmed that it was going to be a marriage of convenience. The story Constantine had told about his daughter's death worried Julie. Julie reasoned that Victor's role in the tragedy could not be overlooked. Julie didn't buy Maggie's claim that Constantine had discovered a way to forgive. Julie knew for sure that Constantine was out to get something. Julie did not buy Maggie's explanation that Victor and Constantine had made amends. Something was off, she thought, and Maggie was too smart to be gullible. Julie was asked to have faith in Maggie's competence. Julie thought Maggie had a plan, and she wanted to find out what it was. By asking if Chad and the kids would be coming over for dinner, Maggie shifted the subject. Julie revealed that Chad was looking for Clyde Weston because he thought Abigail's death had been planned in advance. Constantine asked Teresa how she planned to get Alex to marry her at the Kiriaki's mansion. Following Teresa's marriage to Alex, Constantine anticipated receiving a portion of Alex's wealth. Teresa was reminded by Constantine that he had discovered the forger who had altered Victor's letter to name Alex as Victor's son. Brady entered the room as Constantine mentioned diverting the true heir's money. When Constantine tried to say to divide to the true heirs their money, he claimed he had misspoken and blamed his poor English. When Constantine made his graceful exit, Teresa backed up. Together, Brady and Teresa said, I don't like that guy. Brady inquired as to Teresa's plans with Alex. Brady was alarmed when Teresa informed him that Alex planned to keep seeing Kristen. According to Teresa, so that means we're in an open relationship. Brady acknowledged that he was unaware of Alex and Kristen's seriousness, but he could see that it was causing Teresa concern. Brady was aware that Teresa disliked sharing. Teresa acknowledged that she detested having the impression that she was not sufficient for Alex, or for any man, for that matter. Teresa claimed that she was too proud to force a man into a relationship. Brady gave Teresa an incredulous look. Are you confident in that? He pressed. While attempting to break the pattern, Teresa acknowledged that she had done exactly that to Brady. Teresa made the decision not to feel guilty about Alex's situation. Why should I if he doesn't intend to be exclusive? She stated Brady was kissed and his face was grabbed by Teresa. Brady gave Teresa a quick kiss back before walking away. What are you engaged in? He pressed. She claimed it was impulsive. According to Teresa, Brady had reciprocated her kiss. Brady stated that he needed to process what had just occurred because he was caught off guard. If I'm being really honest, I want you, Brady, Teresa said while placing her hands on Brady's shoulder. And if you're going to be truthful with me, you're going to admit that you also want me. Declaring that Tate was the only connection between them, Brady left Teresa and walked away. Brady said that their co-parenting had been going well recently and that they shouldn't blow it. What if I swear on a stack of Bibles that there will be no more drama, at least not for me, anyway, and I will behave with the utmost dignity, self-respect, and respect for you, and there will be no more clinginess, pressure, or demands, and we can just celebrate this connection that you and I have? Teresa asked Brady. What if I swear that there will be no more drama, at least not for me, anyway? Brady was informed by Teresa that she was aware that he wasn't seeing anyone and that he must be feeling lonely. She thought Brady might be in need of companionship, love, and warmth. When Alex got to the Demera mansion, he gave Kristen a big kiss. When it came to having sex with Kristen, Alex said that he was a kid in a candy store and that the candy store was open 24-7. He was told by Kristen that she was changing the hours. She explained that she wasn't all that into Alex, despite finding him fun and energetic. Alex inquired of Kristen regarding the source of the decision. After having a conversation with Stefan, Kristen informed Alex that she had come to the conclusion that casual sex could have serious repercussions. Kristen said that Alex was lying about how much he loved Teresa. 
Alex was reminded by Kristen that they had started their relationship to make Brady and Teresa jealous. Alex stated, and then, it became something else. Or, maybe not, Kristen responded. Alex was informed by Kristen that he had slept with Teresa the night before. She claimed Alex had said things that were very romantic. Alex was given the advice by Kristen to be open with himself regarding his feelings for Teresa. Kristen stated that Alex was only using her as a distraction from Teresa and that she was in love with Brady. Alex acknowledged that Kristen may be correct. Kristen grinned and said, Marlena has nothing on me. She inquired as to Alex's reasoning for keeping Teresa at arm's length. Honestly, I can't help feeling there's a reason why I shouldn't trust her, was Alex's response. Alex had the impression that Teresa wasn't being straight with him, but he wasn't sure why he had doubts. Alex recalled instances in which Teresa was close to confessing something to him, but she would later change her mind. Additionally, Alex recalled times when he had caught Teresa in a white lie, at which point she would make meaningless justifications. Kristen raised the possibility that Teresa was concealing a larger lie from Alex. If Alex truly loved Teresa, he should find out what she was afraid to tell him, Kristen advised. As a friend, Alex thanked Kristen for listening to him and helping him figure things out. Alex and Kristen exchanged well wishes. Alex gave her a quick kiss and left. Kristen took the diamond bracelet Alex had given her out of the box. After putting it down, she took out her phone. She thought, oh, Brady, as she looked at an old picture of her and Brady. I will go to any lengths to win you back. And I won't let you go this time. Given how dangerous Clyde was, Maggie wondered how Chad could pursue Clyde. It was brought back around by Julie. How can you say that and not be aware of how risky it is for you to marry Constantine, when he must have detested Victor? Julie demanded before it's too late, Julie advised Maggie to call off the wedding. Constantine entered the space. And why would she do that, then? He pressed. Constantine mentioned that no one in Salem had locked their doors and that the door had been open. Well, it's a friendly town, Julie replied in a sarcastic tone. We don't anticipate any unwanted visitors. Constantine stated that he would safeguard Maggie and expressed his gratitude to her for marrying him. He was named by Julie. She said, I'm just having a hard time believing that you're going to have such a rosy future since her late husband was responsible for the death of your daughter. She was referring to her daughter's death. Maggie stated that she did not believe Julie was concerned about her personal life. Constantine activated the charm and informed Maggie that he shared Julie's desire to safeguard Maggie. Victor and Constantine had made amends, Constantine attempted to explain. According to Constantine's statement to Julie, his daughter would not want him to fill his heart with hardness. Constantine expressed gratitude to Maggie for her proposal. He let it be known that he had some bad news, Constantine's visa was about to run out, and they had to get married tomorrow. Maggie smiled, and Julie's jaw dropped.